welcome you all in this service as we celebrate the life of Kevin and as we look forward to the coming days and asking God that he will help the family, friends and all of us uh, to make his vision a reality. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be there where I am. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God. I keep on moving and you know it's not the same. And when I'm walking all alone, do you hear me call your name? Do you hear me sing the songs we used to sing? You filled my life with wonder, touched me with surprise. I always saw that something special deep within your eyes. And through the good times and the bad, we carried on with pride. I hold on the love and life we knew. And I would light a candle for you. Just want to do a short um, speech just to let you guys know what Kevin was um, if, and if you're still wondering what this day is about. Um, it's been a year since we all lost a close friend and a brother in Kevin. In that year, a lot of us have endured the torch, have, have, have tried to ensure the torch that Kevin lit it remains and ignites a drive and a passion in all of us and do things that we otherwise probably wouldn't have done. Just a few examples of that would be Lois. Uh, she took part in a Race for Life, a charity fundraising event uh, run on behalf of Cancer Research. Another example of that would be Angela, aka Lush, most people know her as Lush. She took part in another charity event. This is called Back to the Trenches. Sounds a bit scary, I know. Um, if you want a sort of a clear idea what that was about, anyone here that loves athletics, think of it as a, um, a 3,000 meter steeplechase where you've got hurdles, you've got mud baths, and you've just got overcome those obstacles. Now, if you're wondering where Lush came in this, I'm sure I don't need to tell you how good Kenyans are and long distance running. So, she did all right, she did all right. Uh, those are just a few examples that I was telling you guys about. But in us all, within this past year, especially the youth, Kevin has sort of made us think about things differently. Um, he's obviously brought awareness into something that we are the I can't believe it's been a year already. Um... been hard uh. and that's because of unfortunately what Kevin's gone through now the way he saw it was yes I've suffered yes I've endured but if I can start something that will later on save somebody's life I've done my bit and I think that's probably one of the most important things we can take away from today Who is this, actually? It's my and a privilege for the ACL to be, to be invited here today, tonight, this afternoon, to celebrate Kevin's life and all that he achieved and all that he's going to achieve 
with your help going forward. I'm going to give you a presentation about the subject matter, giving the gift of life, which is what Kevin, which is the last legacy that Kevin actually wants going forward. Made it, made it very clear to his family, his friends, and to the ACO, to the African Caribbean Leukemia Trust, that there is a goal to try and save more lives in his name so that others, individuals, and their family and friends do not have to go through the heartbreak that his family and friends have gone through, and yourselves. We of African descent, whether we are from the African continent or from abroad, from the Caribbean, from America, from Europe, our bone marrow types are different to any other race, so we can only attempt and actually achieve saving a life with someone of our own ethnicity. A white person will match a white person, an Asian to an Asian, and so on. That's how bone marrow matching works. Blood transfusions are different. I gave blood on, uh, this week for the third, t third time. My O positive can go to anyone of any race who needs it. Race isn't a major factor, but on stem cell bone marrow, we are the majority in this room, and we can only help someone of your ethnicity or my ethnicity who lives here or abroad, who needs help like Kevin did. I saved over 65 lives. We started from less than 600 black or mixed race people on the register. We've now got over 60,000 on the register. And the last fact I'll leave you with. If you're white and you need a stem cell bone marrow transplant, at best, at best, you have a 90% chance of finding a donor, multiple donors, in Britain, Australia, Europe, America. If you are black or mixed race, you have less than 20% chance of finding a match because we are not doing what Kevin wants us to do. Take the bull by the horn and step up. On behalf of Kevin, on behalf of his family, on behalf of you and your extended family and friends, and on those who we've worked on behalf of, who we're working with now and in the future, Kevin, thank you, thank you. Whether it's in Kevin, you have, you have 47 counties. Each of these counties is an opportunity to do something. It's huge. We should be here. For the knowledge that we have acquired, we can transform our country. And that's why we need to work together. The knowledge that I have, we share with somebody else, and there's a room for everyone. The website has like running costs, and Auntie has been funding it at our own pocket. So there is a donate icon. Can everybody see that token? No? All right, that was a challenge because I know the best way you can see it is when you log on. So when you get home, get on the website, browse through it. That was a deliberate effort, correct? <laughs> so when you get there, have a browse through it, register, 
learn about it, learn about the disease, learn about the um, chemical, chemical trust, and just immerse yourself in this. Um, for a year we've lived with this and we've learned what it takes to, to help somebody. Um, this is from the High Commission. The family of Kevin Karawa invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we start by registering the acquisition of your invitation, or you inviting us to this, uh, in, to this function in memory of Kevin Karawa. Uh, I bring to you their message of encouragement and support because I commend the presenters and speakers uh, for the wonderful presentations and graceful speeches in Kevin's honor and remembrance. They were also very informative. And as the last speaker said, most of us did not know there is anything called donor registration or marrow, bone marrow transplant uh, registration. Of a child is the most painful, wrenching, and incomprehensible deprivation of a family or community that can suffer because children are the hope and future and continuity of family and indeed the very survival of a society. They are expected to outlive their parents. And to, and to perpetuate the family lineage and build strong societies. And when the death steals our hopes and expectations, there are always bitter and searching questions left to torment us and then the pain and remorse can be overwhelming. Kevin's family has decided to overcome the grief of his death and has taken the pain and turned it into something beautiful and positive so that through his memory, through it, his memory will live on. The initiative by Kevin's family to create awareness about the incidence and management of leukemia and related health conditions in Kenya will save many lives and elevate the suffering of those affected by the same ailment that took Kevin away. It is thus a great honor for the Kenya High Commission to be associated with such an endeavor. The advancement of Kevin's memorial legacy will help spread the important message of bone marrow donation and most importantly, lead to the implementation of a donor register in Kenya. This noble initiative resonates very well with the Kenyan government's diaspora policy of technological transfer and expertise tapping from the diaspora to increase knowledge back home. The Kenyan government is aware of the diaspora's capacity to significantly contribute to the development of our country. To this effect, the main thrust of the policy is to harness and maximize any potential to, to contribute to Kenya's social economic transformation while meeting their needs and expectations through mutual, beneficial and lasting partnerships. The Kenya High Commission will do all it can to assist in the advancement and realization of the Kevin Karawa Memorial by providing letters by providing relevant linkages to government institutions and regulatory agencies in the health and civil society advocacy. We will assist you in showcasing these kinds of initiatives at conferences in order to get as many stakeholders as possible involved, thus sharing knowledge, expertise, and experiences, and may Kevin Carrara Memorial live on. I came here, I was given that message, and I worked with Veronica to see that this legacy carries on. We meet with the High Commission, the High Commission, and we we'll look for the way forward, and I can assure you, this will not be forgotten. Now, all these countries are very crucial for investment, for employment, for education, and voting. And you have realized voting now is open to the
Uh, like investment, you, could, you know, you cannot do investment in Kenya if you don't have an ID card, it's a very crucial document. And we offer that, uh, that uh, document at the embassy. Okay, also in investment, you need passports to travel for business transaction. We do offer passport at the embassy. When, uh, when it comes to employment, we have some uh, employers who insist that you should have a certificate of good conduct. We issue a certificate of good conduct at the embassy. We have seen employers, especially in children's home. You cannot work in a children's home if you don't have a certificate of good conduct. And that one is easily available at the embassy. When it comes to education, children who are joining college they need birth certificates. Some of them have lost the birth certificate. You can get the replacement at the embassy. Also, some of the education institutions, they also require a certificate of good conduct for the admitted student. That's also offered at the embassy. And then for the voting, we don't have the diaspora now, you are not, you have been allowed to vote next election. And you need to have your documents before you register as a voter, maybe a uh, passport and ID. So briefly, let me tell you which, of, which services we offer. We offer passport, as I mentioned. We also do uh, identity card uh, issuance. That is for the first time applicants and for those who are replacing. Those who are also replacing the lost one, we do it at the embassy. We do the birth certificate for replacement of the lost birth certificate, we do. We also have birth certificate for children born abroad. We, we process them at the embassy. We also do a replacement of marriage certificate at the embassy. And we also issue a certificate of no abandonment to marriage. For those who are Kenyans who want to get married abroad, we need that certificate before the priest can allow you to conduct the marriage. Certificate of law impediment to marriage. That is issued as an embassy. And I also mentioned we do also a certificate of good conduct at the embassy. We also do joint citizenship registration at the embassy, especially for those who got their citizenship after 2010. For those who got their citizenship before 2010, you need to regain, also do it at the embassy. Because uh, technically you lost your citizenship, because the law did not allow you to be joint citizen. The other service we do at the embassy, we also legalize documents if you have a uh, Maybe a marriage certificate you need to be legalized to come at the embassy, we do it for you. We also issue visas to those uh, uh, UK citizens who want to go to Kenya as tourists. And then we also do the registration of Kenyans at the embassy. We have a population of almost 200,000 Kenyans in the UK, but only 7,000 are registered. It's very critical. Now we have introduced online registration. If you go to our website, you can now uh, register online. And you want the numbers to be high so that you can convince the local commission that the UK is ready to participate in the next election. We can also convince them that we need almost five polling stations. You might need a polling station, two polling stations in London, another polling station in Manchester, another one in Glasgow. But if the number of years of uh, Kenya is just too low, we might only have London only as a polling station, not for our disadvantage. Okay, may I take this opportunity to thank uh, Mama Veronica for inviting us. And in the future, we'll be willing to come back. This organization came to be formed because of Kevin. And I want to explain to you why. Um, most, most of us, uh, we meet when there are occasions, maybe barriers, weddings and those kind of um, occasions. And after Kevin died, uh, people who live around South London, we came together and thought um, it is important that we be meeting at other occasions, like Christmas, or maybe like when you have um, occasions for Kenyan celebration, instead of only meeting when we are burying somebody. So we felt there was a need for uh, an organization that will bring Kenyans together in South London. I know there are organizations like in East London, in Bedford, uh, Liverpool, and such places. But around this area, we didn't have one. So we formed the, an organization called United Kenyan Organization. Uh, and the idea of the group is to bring Kenyans together, to share ideas, and also um, to be helping each other whenever the need arises. The knowledge tells me that um, when one task is taken up by many people, it becomes easy. So, first of all, uh, before we, 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 um, we think of how we can help the trust, maybe what we need to do is to register 
a small amount of marrow donors, and then we can um, help the trust in advancing its cause. Obviously, we will be asking the High Commission to help us in accessing uh, the government in Kenya, because um, what we intend to do, obviously, is to create a donor register in Kenya. Uh, like you had earlier on, there are only two countries in Africa with a donor register. That's South Africa and Nigeria. And maybe we can be the third country to have a donor register. And I think it's very important because in this day and age, that is a vital tool in, uh, in health. And um, maybe the High Commission can help us to access the Ministry of Health, maybe departments like um, government chemists or chemistry where a test can be done. And I think that would be of uh, great help. So, um, mine was just to um, say thank you to all. And also to say that uh, we have the Kenya, United Kenya Community Association in South London and we are there to help all Kenyans around here. We have members who are from South London, from East London, from Kent and um, we'll be welcoming every Kenyan who lives in London to join us because we think, uh, we know the other organizations in London are doing the same thing. But then again, we are unique in our own way. Um, so we will be opening up and asking all of you to join us. So I don't have much to say, but to say thank you for joining us. And um, to say a lot of thanks to organizers of today's events, just by the members of the Trust. And just before I sit down, I'm going to ask them to come here because when we leave this place, and that happens a lot, uh, Kenyans talk, but once they walk out of that door, I think the whole thing is forgotten. So before we leave today, I'm going to ask members of the Trust who formed it to come here so that in case you have any question, in case you need to contact anybody about the Trust, you know who to talk to. So, um, please, can you, the members of the Trust, can you come forward, please? Uh, you know yourselves. Um, is Isaac there? Veronica, please come. Uh, Roger. Um, and, uh, Ian, where's Ian? Ian, okay, uh, Ian is also a member of the Trust, and in case you need any information concerning Kevin Kimia Trust, uh, or you want to ask any question and contact any of us, We'll be soon be launching a website uh, about the Leukemia Trust and there will be telephone numbers or maybe you can contact us by email. But so far we haven't done that because we just had the beginning and one of us here can be of help if we need anything. Thank you very much and um, God bless you all. Thank you. so many people, but I'm standing here uh, as a mother to Kevin Cararo, and may I take this opportunity to thank the, the commissioner's uh, representatives, uh, Mrs. Grace Herrera, your husband, your daughter, um, Mr. Benson, and all the other guests, Reverend and all the other reverends, my friends, all of you. I'm so, so grateful and I don't know what to say when I'm standing here. All I want to take this opportunity to thank you for all the support, for you coming, taking your time to come and be with us today. Um, as you all know, yes, it's one year since Kevin left us, but I still remember vividly when he gave me that call that changed my life. It was on 20th April 2012. And I remember this very well because it was my birthday. He was 22 years old and in his third year in university. But before the call, Kevin was suffering from a cold which had persisted for three weeks. As a mother and as a nurse, I was concerned, so I advised him to get his blood tested. Luckily, he followed my advice, and he went for a blood test. Unfortunately, they found he had leukemia. 
leukemia. I had heard the word before. And I knew it was a form of a cancer. But I had never taken any interest. But now I had to. I was forced to. Why? Because it was happening to me. Friends, I want to mention here for, that for most of us, we hear things, we see things, and talk about things that are happening to other people. Things that are happening around us, within our community and even to some of us. But we really don't take much interest. And that is until it affects us. And sometimes, we still choose not to do something. I know that there are factors that contribute to this state of affairs. Apathy, ignorance, lack of information and education, attitudes, and many others. But I wonder, but here in the West, do we really have an excuse? And I've asked myself that question so many times. When Kevin was diagnosed, we were informed that due to advancement of new cancer treatments, there was hope of recovery through a bone marrow transplant. We were informed that they were going to look for a match in the World Donor Register. However, it never occurred to us, nor did they tell us that the World Register consisted of countries from the West, and as you've heard, only two from Africa, and the Nigeria one is a very small one, by the way. They did not tell us, nor did we know that matching goes with ethnicity and place of origin. Moreover, they did not tell us, nor did we know the ethnic minority do not register, that we are underrepresented in the world donor registries, which meant truly, given Kevin's specifics, he had almost a near chance of survival. It really never dawned on us how desperate the situation was. And that was until we met Beverly Girl from ACLT. They did a presentation in hospital one evening, and it was when for the first time we heard the cruel facts and knew that we were fighting a losing battle. Me and Kevin, we never discussed it. But I believe that we were each nursing our own fears. On the following day, Kevin asked me, Mom, I thought when they said world register, I could not miss a match. The whole wide world? How come they didn't tell, they didn't tell us this information? And at that point, I saw real fear, hopelessness, helplessness in his eyes. And I didn't know what to tell him. All I had was I hugged him and encouraged him not to lose hope. After the presentation, we, are, we approached Beverly. She heard our story, and ACLT took upon themselves to help us find a donor for Kevin. And as most of you are aware, Kevin appeared both in local and national news, appealing for a donor. We also held a donor drive in PCA UK outreach, and nearly 500 people registered in a period of two hours. This was amazing and very encouraging. Unfortunately, a donor was not found. And sadly, my son died on May 20, 2014. And may I mention here that during the appeal, I got so many calls. And even ACRT said they got so many calls from all over the world. But what caught me was the calls I received from Kenya. There were numerous calls. And they were asking, they were from young people, they have heard the appeal, and they were saying, 
Where do we go? How can we help? Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't have anyone to tell them where to go. And I knew one of them could have been smashed. We were desperate. It dawned on me that um, our country were quite, was quite behind in anything to do with bone marrow registry. And it was really sad. And I can't tell you how it made me feel. Kevin's wishes before he died was no one should go through what he went through. All through his illness, Kevin never lost hope. He believed he would get better and had vowed to campaign for people to register once he got out of the hospital. Unfortunately, it was never to be. And as his mother, having gone through the pain of seeing him suffer and losing him, and knowing that someone out there could have been his match, <coughs> if only they had registered, I have vowed to do this on his behalf. But I know very well I cannot do it on my own. I need your help and support. Because collectively, as a people, we can achieve more. I think we can achieve anything. Don't you think? Yes. I know we can. So why don't you get that slogan of, yes, we can? Yes. Yes. My friends, Let us not wait until things happen to us before we act. And as all the speakers have said here, let us be proactive in responding to issues that are affecting us and others because tomorrow it could be you. It is good if we did things that would save way to lessen other people's pains and to avoid people going what I went through. I know pain is personal, and nobody would ever know what I went through for those two years. I can say there were two cruel years. But because of the grace of God, I know I can stand here and push Kevin's legacy. As our High Commissioner visitor has said, I think people in diaspora, we have enough knowledge, skills, experience that can bring positive changes back home and I want to be counted in bringing those changes and maybe this is one of them. Are you going to support us? Please let us not be passive and ignorant anymore. Let us try and make a difference in our own small way individually and collectively. Let us, let, let us impact on our world, because I think we can. And I know sometimes, as Mr. Gakuru has said, it's a challenge, challenge more. And I know that. From what I know, from what I've heard, I know it's such a challenge more. But I'm not going to stop. And I'm not going to be intimidated by that. Because I know a small difference can, if you make a small difference, it can transform to the other person, to a community, and then to a nation. So I'm thinking all of us can be able to do something wherever we are in a small way. Even if it means telling somebody to go and register, you have made a difference. If it is just passing information, because sometimes people think it's about money. Sometimes it's not about money. I know money is important, and we need it to progress things, but there are some other things that we can do to make changes. Telling people, we have so many skills in our midst, we have so many, not, we, have more, we have knowledge, and we are welcoming all that in progressing this legacy. So I'm appealing to anyone, in any way, even if there are any 
function somewhere and you think we can come, do a talk, and get people to register, please call us. We can do that. And I know ACLT cannot be probably be able to reach the Kenyan community. We can be the ambassadors of reaching the Kenyan community, the East African community. We can do that. And we can all play a part in making sure that we pass those information so that we'll be able to get so many people to register. May I also take this opportunity to thank you all again for the support you have given me. And may I particularly draw special attention to friends of Kevin and our youth in general. I'll never forget the youth I'm talking to you. I'll really never forget how your contribution before and after Kevin's death. It was amazing. And I, for one, was very proud of you. And all of us here who came to Kevin's funeral, you witnessed what they can do. But I want to appeal to you. You saw Mandy Gatabaki here. She's the one who did that short film. We got Idel, she did all this for us. We got skills in our youth. We've got a lot of knowledge, but I don't think we use them enough. I don't think we draw them to us enough to be able to get that, those skills and the knowledge that they have. But I'm also appealing to our youth. Please use this knowledge, use these skills. Don't follow the celebrities. But use these skills to go back home. Remember where, we, where, remember where your parents came from. You have seen the poverty there. You have seen the illnesses that are there. We brought you here. We've worked so hard. And I know this is a high time that we passed, we, we passed on the torch to our youth. And I know they can also make a difference back home. Because as the Sagakuru said, they have the technology, they have the energy, they have the skills and they can do all the, those things. So let us encourage them, let us support them and please you, don't forget where you came from. And the reason I'm saying this is because I brought Kevin up here and I know he would have called himself a British but when it came to that crucial time when he needed some, somebody to save his life he would have only got it from where he came from. Is that right? right. So really and truly, even if we want to deny where we came from, we cannot run away from who we are and where we've come from. So... <laughs> so I'm just appealing to the youth to get connected back home, see what's happening and make a difference. And may the peace that comes from God that is beyond human understanding be with you. Even when time comes when you feel that you have no peace, may his peace be with you. And may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.